to the studio. Uh, it's going to be a great vlog post today. We're celebrating so many things today. This is our 50th vlog post in two years of vlogging. Um, hard to believe because we've been having such a great time. So we're celebrating that today and we're also celebrating, uh, we just passed our 3,000 subscription and we really appreciate all of your subscriptions thank you so much and when you subscribe and you hit the subscribe button there's a little bell thing next to it and if you want to hit that you'll get notifications all the time so oh and also we love your thumbs up we thank you for that we work hard on your videos and um, today we're going to be um, discussing the five because it's our our 50th vlog post, the five most asked questions that everyone always asks me on YouTube. So we're going to do that right now. So we're going to start with number five. And that is a question that I get asked all the time about making transfers. Everyone wants to know, can you make transfers out of laser copies, out of inkjet copies and out of toner copies and the answer is yes you can make copies out of all of them let me just start with toner copies those are the copies that you get from a copy center when you bring those home you should be able to make any kind of transfer using a toner copy because it's just really really good now the difference is with home printers when you're using an inkjet or a laser jet sometimes the colors don't always transfer from the copy to the transfer that you're making on your art piece. So you could ha end up, you could be printing black, but it comes out blue or purple. So it really depends on where your, um, you know, how, how good your machine is, how much ink is in it, that kind of thing. So that's the answer to that question. Okay, everyone always asks me about vegetable and fruit dyes and whether they're color fast or not. And the answer to that question is no, they're not. They are gonna fade with time. Uh, I will say this, there is a caveat about it though. Just like when you're dyeing Easter eggs, you can put a little bit of uh, vinegar into your water. You can put vinegar in your dye bath and then with your papers, um, after you've dyed those papers, you can iron those papers just like you know you would with cloth that if you were going to tie dye something, you throw it in the dryer and that heat sets it. You know, it will help, but it's going to fade. And it's really supposed to because they're organic and it's supposed to be faded and yummy looking. Number three. Where do you get all those antique bits and prints and ephemera for your work? Well, I go to estate sales and garage sales and flea markets and, and I peruse a lot of stuff. I, I go to thrift stores. You know, anybody that's having a sale, a moving sale, if I drive by and see it, I'm gonna stop and I'm gonna look because you just never know what you're gonna find in that old box. And I'm specifically looking for pieces that are from 1922 and earlier. Um, you know, turn of the century, 1800s, that's really the best kind of stuff to use. I love that stuff. Okay, the number one product that I use in the studio as an adhesive is Golden Regular Gel Matte Medium. I love this product and uh, it's a professional product. So I use it for all of my, um, my mixed media pieces. I use it in art journaling. I use it for collage work. I use it for a lot of things. I really love it. It's archival and it works really well. The next one is PVA, which I absolutely love. And it is a wonderful glue for bookmaking and book binding. And, <laughs> and uh, I made it, I used it for this little book that uh, I sent off to Canada for a show. And, um, and it keeps it archival and um, wonderful and holds it all together. And you're gonna love PVA. Okay, if I'm making some kind of jewelry, which is what I did with this piece, um, it's actually a little cross that I found at an estate sale. And uh, I loved the little, some little pictures that I put into it. I used a product from Judykins and it's called Diamond Glaze. And I love this. It's a great glue. You can use it on all different kinds of things. 
but for jewelry making, um, it has a really nice resin-like quality to it. And it not only seals it really well, but it, it creates that kind of glossy effect and it's, it's really fabulous and a great glue. Okay, I know you remember my little bug book, which I absolutely adore. And uh, one of the things I forgot to tell you is that I used Omni Gel on the little bug picture. The reason I did that is because it, it was on um, metal and because OmniGel transfers all kinds of things to different surfaces. So you can put it on paper, glass, fabric, leather, canvas, and of course I use it on metal. So it's another reason why I adore OmniGel. And lastly, I love um, E6000. And it's an industrial strength glue. And when I make uh, any kind of assemblage, putting um, metal and wood and using paper um, on work. Um, this is a, a shrine that I made many years ago um, uh, for a show in, uh, in New Mexico. And um, so all of this is glued on with OmniGel. And OmniGel is an industrial strength. It's gonna hold everything in place. I would have no fear about sending this across country because nothing's gonna ever happen to it. So E6000. So all of these products that I absolutely love, uh, if you look in the comment section below, then you'll see this little thing that says show last, show more. And if you wanna see all the links, um, just go there, it'll show my blog and everything else, but it'll also have the links for these on Amazon. So if you need one of these, you can get it there. <laughs> okay, last question. Number one question everybody asks me, why do you wear gloves? <laughs> And the reason I wear gloves is because I read labels and I read websites and I know that, you know, being in an artist studio, you're basically in a hazardous uh, location because all of these products have tons of chemicals. And so I wear gloves and I use a mask when I'm sanding. In fact, my mask is right here, so it's very attractive. Um, when I'm sanding things because I want to be a healthy artist and I want to live to be 103. <laughs> and here's a little tip. Um, if they get hot and sweaty on you, and by the way, these are really inexpensive. Just get exam gloves. You can get them in any pharmacy, drugstore, uh, grocery store, everywhere. Um, little tip is cornstarch. I just keep it in the studio and uh, just a little sprinkle um, on my hands, rub them together, put the gloves on, and they won't stick. Hey, we're at Chow for now, and our next blog post, I'm going to be talking to you about creating compositions in mixed media. So if you want to know more about you know, coming up with creating really cohesive, great compositions to keep your eye focused in your work, you'll want to tune in then. So, ciao, ciao!